Today we have the feast of the Apostle Saint Matthew, and his story is remarkable because he had a full and sincere conversion which was total. From his former life he uh, re retained nothing, but all at once turned totally as a disciple and follower of Jesus. This great apostle, St. Matthew, uh, the author of the first gospel, was by profession a publican, that is, a gatherer of taxes for the Romans. This office of his was odious and scan scandalous to the Jews. The Romans sent publicans into the provinces to gather the tributes and this office of a publican was a post of honor, power, and credit, which was usually conferred on Roman knights. But these tax collectors often collected and scraped all they could by various methods of extortion. They frequently used their office to oppress others and to raise their own fortunes instead of that of state. Because of this, even the pagans often spoke of them as exactors, cheaters, and public robbers. But among the Jews, these publicans or tax collectors were even more infamous and odious because the Jews looked upon them as enemies to their privilege of freedom which God had given to the Jews and as persons defiled by their frequent dealing with the pagans. And the Jews also saw them conspiring with the Romans to entail slavery upon their own countrymen. Because of all this, the Jews universally abhorred the publicans. They regarded their money as the fortunes of notorious thieves. They banished them from their religious worship and shunned them in all affairs of civil society and commerce. So this was kind of the reputation, or rather the infamy, of Saint Matthew when he was called to be a disciple of Christ. Jesus had just cured a famous paralytic and continued his journey on the banks of the lake of Genesareth, teaching the people that flocked to hear him. And it was here where he saw Matthew, a despised publican, sitting in his custom house, and he called him to come and follow God and to be his disciple. Dear faithful, the conversion of St. Matthew was truly a remarkable one. You can imagine, this man was rich. He enjoyed a very lucrative post. He was a wise and prudent man and perfectly understood what his conversion would cost him and what an exchange he made of wealth for poverty. But St. Matthew decided that he would overlook all these considerations and left all his interests and relations to become our Lord's disciple. Imagine this apostle at the very first invitation broke all his ties. He abandoned his riches, his family, his worldly concerns, his pleasures, and his profession. His conversion was sincere and perfect. He made it instantly with no delay. He did not resist God's grace, nor made some careful consideration between God 
and sin. No, his was a courageous conversion, for St. Matthew was victorious over all his passions, which tried to lure him to stay, enjoying the uh, clutches of the world. But from the calling of Jesus onwards, St. Matthew never looked back, but followed Jesus with fervor and persevered to the end. After the ascension of our Lord, St. Matthew went to preach the faith to the barbarous and uncivilized nations of the East. Dear faithful, the corruptible state of the modern world, which we often lament, is much like St. Matthew's before his conversion. The the world is tempted so often uh, to choose riches over religion and to, to choose wealth over happy poverty of serving the Lord. We see so much evil in the world that we are often tempted just to close our eyes from it, either because of fear that we might be lured into it, or because of disgust that we just cannot take this anymore. But the answer to these uh, temptations and sad things in the world is not to close our eyes, but to lower them. If we lower our eyes in humility, we also can show to our Lord that we care nothing about the riches or temptations of the world, but are only dedicated to servitude of Him, the Almighty God in heaven. St. Matthew himself delighted in the title of Matthew the Publican because he found in this title his own humiliation. He rejoiced greatly for the divine mercy and of grace of his conversion and he expressed the deep spirit of remorse because he had his former guilt always before his eyes. Upon his conversion, to show that he was not unhappy with this, St. Matthew often invited our Lord and his disciples for a dinner in his house. And today's Gospel gives us one depiction of those of events. There, into his house, St. Matthew invited his friends, especially those of his late profession, no doubt hoping that by conversing with our saviors, these poor people who were still in the servitude of the world might also be converted like he had been. The Pharisees, of course, condemned vigorously vigorously our Lord for eating with publicans and sinners. But he answered their suggestions that he had come for the sick, not for the sound and healthy. And addressing and serving the sick, that is, the people of the world, who used to be like him, was now the main job for St. Matthew, this great apostle. And the world without God, and the world which abandons God, truly is a sick place, and it is in a very great need of a healer. So today, do, let us do our own part in the office and work of God's Holy Church. Let us beg the intercession of this great apostle that his humility, remorse, 
self-denial, charity, and his perfect disengagement from the things of this world may be imprinted in our hearts as well. And let us show the greatest possible charity towards the people of the world and the sinners that is holding fast into our own faith and offer many prayers and masses for them. Because we can see in the life of this great apostle that when God calls you, uh, no obstacle is too great and no temptation of a, of a world is too big that God could not raise it and shatter it to the ground, leaving only his love, charity, uh, and a great hope of salvation intact. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.